I hereby introduce to you Mr. Michael Veazey. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Mr. and Mrs. Mayor, why are boys and girls listening to this? This is an adult show. Please leave. Thank you very much. Welcome back to the show. This is your host, Michael Veazey, and I want to talk today about an important topic which is hard to grasp. It's not an obvious quick easy win in fact it's it's the opposite it's not an obvious quick easy tool that i can say go buy this uh, in fact it's the opposite so <laughs> what i want to talk about today is strategy what does that mean and why does it matter well i can answer the latter question first why does this stuff matter the uh, old chestnut that tony robbins mentions i'm sorry to quote tony robbins i'm a big admirer but a lot of shysters have a bad habit of, of quoting tony robbins So I'm wary, but here goes. It's the old Japanese proverb. Action without vision is a nightmare. Vision without action is a daydream. So let's talk about this because I think this is absolutely critical. There seem to be people fall into sort of three camps in my experience so far of Amazon sellers or or people who are trying to build a business, a proper e-commerce business for that matter, which is the first level, the vision without action thing. That's very, very common with people who are starting out or want to start out but never actually start in the sense that they want to be future entrepreneurs but they they end up staying wantrepreneurs. Wantrepreneurs meaning they never actually make any revenue. That's how you can tell if you have a business, folks, is that you actually have revenue, right? You have customers, you have people buying stuff, right? You probably have expenses as well. If all you have is expenses, you have a problem (laughs) because that's not very sustainable. When you're building a business from scratch, however, of course, you're going to have that stage. That doesn't guarantee that you have a business yet, unfortunately. But even spending money is a good sign. Most people seem to, uh, they get excited about the idea of the business opportunity and they, they kind of as I did initially, let me confess, you know, get seduced by the idea of passive income or, or income that's more leveraged and you don't have to exchange time for money. Now, there is a lot of reality with that. Is location independence completely 100% true? Passive, mm, not so much. Leveraged, certainly. But anyway, people fall in love with those ideas and they generally, they get seduced by that and they have an idea of what they can have for themselves but they don't have a vision of what they're going to give to the world. In fact, they're very, very vague in most cases about that. They, they thrash around using tools and other people's systems to try and substitute for imagination. Now, I sell a system, which is the private label process. I say sell a system. I mean, we have a system that we put people through in there. There is a course for that, the private label process course. If you want to check that out, we're currently closed for enrollments, but you can sign up so that you're in the VIP launch so that you can get special bonuses when we relaunch it pretty soon. Amazingfba.com forward slash PLP. That's P for Peter, L for Lima, P for Peter. So, okay, fine. So I serve that market and I try and serve it well and honestly because I try not to give across the impression that you can do this thing with no money and it's easy and quick and it's a real business like anything else. But what I also try and get people to do is start by having a vision of a particular person with a particular pain. In fact, vision is too general a word for that. They need to be very specific. What is it you really know about? What do you really care about? Let's get very, very specific before you go out and rely on tools to do stuff for you. In a way, even then, rather than saying that vision is wrong, it's not about vision is wrong. It is that their vision isn't strong enough. They have a vision for themselves of sitting on a beach using their laptop, which is an absurd idea, by the way. I've never done it. It, They have sand on beaches. It's not a good mix. And there's no Wi-Fi on most beaches, right? But but everyone always sells that. I suppose at some point, I probably ought to get a shot done of myself on holiday with a laptop on a beach just to tick that box, right? But (laughs) the reality is, yeah, you can work from hotel room anywhere or Airbnb. I've done that lots of times where I'm on holiday somewhere and I just keep the Amazon business ticking. Sure, that is true. But here's the thing. That's a vision for you as the entrepreneur and the lifestyle benefits of it. Fine. And that's not going to get you anywhere because what you you bought into the vision that I may have painted or, or somebody else has painted more likely uh, of a rather rosy picture for yourself, but it's still a vision to aim towards. Why not? Here's the thing. The reason why that doesn't work for most people is because they don't get a vision for their their customers of what they're doing for their customers. So if, for example, I sell the most wonderful podcast microphone in the world or what I should be painting for people, well, I should have a vision in my mind, before I even start trying to create a business, is a vision, however general, of helping 
thousands of people launch their own podcast and, and being part of that. Okay, maybe I'm just selling them a microphone to start with. Maybe I'm selling them a podcast course. Um, maybe I'm selling them a stand for for um, lighting or for a, a microphone stand or, or for the, what do you call it, video camera. Whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. But what I'm doing is I've got a vision of helping other people to achieve something that I care about in and of itself. And as a side effect of that, I'm going to get paid. Now, of course, you've got to engineer things so that you get paid. For sure, we have a vision of a lifestyle that some people enjoy and some don't. For sure, there can be massive upsides to it. Um, but the main thing is you've got to have vision for your customers, for your products, for what your business does in the world. In other words, you've got to be excited about the process of business creation and a vision of what your business does in the world which is really different motivated really different mentality to i just want to kind of do something and i don't want to think about it too much i want to hand the responsibility over to a course uh, structure and to a bunch of tools like whatever it is helium 10 jungle scout they're all good tools they have their place for sure i'm a big fan of re using the right tools but you cannot how hand on responsibility to a course creator or tool creators for creating a business that just isn't going to happen that's kind of expecting the mechanics to substitute for the vision that's expecting computers to substitute for brains that's expecting systems to substitute for imagination and that is really a dereliction of our duty as human beings to what we have to offer the machines are taking over guys the amazon algorithm rules everything the amazon system will or won't let you do stuff that is the best guide to whether amazon as a business will let us as third-party sellers do things for example if you want to get ungated you try and sell a product and the seller central system if you haven't used it seller central is the the dashboard for amazon sellers will either let you um, do something or it won't and if the system as in the computer system won't let you do things you can get hold of Amazon seller support and talk to human beings, but the human beings are mostly contained within the structure that is predominantly driven by the machine. So Amazon is a machine learning company, is an artificial intelligence company. It is the one of the great tech companies. Second, probably only to Google and with Facebook, it's kind of in that realm. It's an extraordinary tech company. So you are in a realm where the machine is incredibly efficient and machines doing what it does well, which is use algorithms and numbers to match up people and products to try and maximize profit and, and all the other objectives that Amazon has is well beyond profit. It's about expanding into the known universe and taking over the world, not just of e-commerce notice of, of more and more and more products in the virtual realm as well. I mean, they now make their own programs for, for tv and film or whatever i watched one recently really good i watched another one where they they got the former infamous uh, jeremy clarkson and, and what do you call it uh, richard hammond and the other guy whose name escapes me so sorry um from top gear when they got fired by the bbc they immediately got snapped up by amazon who spent a ton of money making you know, not probably the greatest program, but they're getting better at it. So look, Amazon is wanting to expand into the known universe. It has a computer to help them do that, right? So Amazon is also in bed with the Chinese factories these days, producing the Amazon basics lines of things. And again, the Chinese factories have the labor, so they may not be as sophisticated. In some cases they are, but in many cases, they just throw human power at the problem. If they need to analyze stuff, they get 100 people creating spreadsheets. So between the computers run by Amazon geniuses and the Chinese suppliers with, with almost infinite manpower and probably pretty infinite capital as well, how on earth can we survive? You know, it sounds like I'm painting a bleak picture. And it is a bleak picture if you have no vision. If you're not driven by numbers only, then you're up against the greatest in the world, the Chinese, the might of the Chinese, quasi-funded by the Chinese Communist Party, which is behind everything. Um, which is a one-party state, so they don't have to care about what people think about them very much, um, as long as they have the impression of continuously growing wealth. Funded very, very strongly with massive manpower and the algorithm. The answer to all these problems is vision, imagination, understanding human beings because you're a human being, and understanding very specific human being that actually has something in common with you. Otherwise, I think you're a wandering generality and you will be squashed. 
that that's never going to work. And that was never good business practice. It was always a bad idea. It's just exceptionally bad idea on Amazon. But it's true on Udemy as well. If you're going to sell courses, considering that as well, it's very much like the Amazon for online courses. Again, you've got to stand out. You've got to be exceptional. You've got to get ahead of the pack or you're squashed. You're just lost. And, and the world generally, Google works the same way, right? Online is just like that. So, by the way, I think this is just an intensification of economics in in the whole. If you look at the studies from the 1960s, for example, way before the internet or mobile phones, probably just before satellites even existed or were put up in space anyway, if you looked at the structure of a market, it tends toward monopoly. And so the big players get bigger and the small fish tend to get swallowed up or to die off. That is the nature of, of uh, markets when they're left to their own devices. So coming back to the question of strategy, what the hell is it all about? Vision versus mechanics. So vision is essential for beginners, but it's not the vision of I want my business to do this for me and my family. Important as that is, of course, it's a vision of what could business be? What can I create? What's exciting to make? Being interested in the process. So if beginners tend to fall in love with vision and don't take action, so coming back to that Japanese proverb, which I think is, contains so much wisdom, so I'm going to re reference that. That's the kind of framework for this it may seem like a rambling podcast, but I don't think it is. I think there's a precise concept around behind here, but I'm trying to get it across strategy. What the hell is that? And, and what is vision as well, which I think is linked. If vision without action is a daydream, and that's what a lot of newbies do, I think it's not because of too much vision and too little action. I think they don't have a clear enough vision in order to take action. I would argue that. The mechanics are super important, but mechanics are a commodity now. Anyone can do the mechanics, but if you don't have a vision, you sense, this is why most people don't do it, you sense, mm, this isn't a good vision, and therefore you don't take action. Now, there is, however, a difference between people who have vision that could work and take action versus people with a rubbish vision realize that and just get out of the game, which is good. Because if you're going to have a rubbish strategic positioning in a marketplace, if you're going to sell you know, garlic presses famously or whatever is, you know, saturated thing on online or iPhone cases, you're really making a bad strategic decision because you can't beat, you can't edge your way into that marketplace without normally $100,000 in your mark, in your back pocket, at least probably more with garlic presses or something like that. So unless you are in that position, that's a poor strategic decision. And it's a good idea not to execute on that vision because it's a poor one. That said, people often come up with reasonably viable looking products, but they don't execute and they don't take action and therefore they don't get feedback from the marketplace. So the second mental model is experimentation. You've got to come up with a quality hypothesis, which is vision, but then you've got to get out and experiment to see if your vision is actually viable and adjust it and fine tune between your idea and the marketplace, which is, I think, another critical aspect of what the hell is strategy. I've been thinking about this a hell of a lot. I've been reading about this, but also in conjunction with what's actually happening in the 10K Collective Mastermind and the Million Pound Mastermind, where people have really um, businesses that are growing, thriving, dominating their niches. First of all, dominating is critical. It's not an optional extra. It's not only for the big guys. It's this or go home. This is my learning from which the Richard Koch's star principle emerges looking shining truth. It's not just a theory. It's actually incredibly relevant for Amazon sellers. I've just been persuading everyone in the 10K Collective Mastermind to have that. And I actually bought them all a copy of the book. I'm going to give copies to the Million Pound Mastermind members when we meet next week in mid-February in London. And if you want to check that out, by the way, go to amazingfba.com forward slash 10K. Uh, 10k if you want to join the 10k collective you actually need a turnover of minimum about thirty thousand dollars a year or, or pounds or euros equivalent million pound mastermind as the name implies at least a million pounds in turnover probably higher but let's talk if you're about that level and if you're interested in that one you have to just email me i don't even have a sales page up for it yet but i will be pushing hard on that michael at amazingfba.com is my email so going back to what I'm seeing happening in those groups is exceptionally clear. You have to dominate a niche. So let's talk about the relationship between the vision and action thing. The second level of people that I encounter a lot, and some of those I work with as mentoring clients, and sometimes they're sort of more struggling sellers at the lower end of the, the 10K collective sometimes. When I say lower end, this is not disparaging. The income may be lower, but also their, their positioning in the marketplace is often me too and not right. So they've taken action, which is great. And I totally take my hat off to the whatever, 2% of people who, who actually do anything on Amazon, open a seller center account and actually sell something and still in business after a year. 
It's about 2%. That's the statistic, which is, you know, the 80-20 rule times... I mean, it's basically a new reality, which Perry Marshall references. It again comes back to why you've got to be dominant. The 80-20 of the 80-20 of the 80-20 means that it, on Amazon, it's not 20% of people who start an Amazon business make money. It's not even... F- 20% of that, which would be 5% of the people making money, it's the 80-20 of the 80-20 of the 80-20. It was basically 1% or 0.8% if you're being really precise about 80-20 that are actually making the money. Now, again, you could take that to say, oh my God, it's a terrible game. Don't get into it. It's, it's hopeless. No, that is not what I'm saying. It's hopeless if you have no vision and no, no action. You've got to have vision and action and you've got to, your vision needs to be precise enough to cut through the noise to really dominate a tiny but dominatable slightly separate slice of the world called a niche market, right? Niche is a French for gap or niche as the Americans call it. Sorry, if you're listening, Yanks, that's not how you say it. Niche is a French word, but I know you like to change words. So, hey, let's not argue about it. And the riches are in the niches if you want to be really cheesy. But it's, it's true. Not just the riches, survival is in the niches. You cannot just go out and be wandering generality and make money on Amazon. You might make sales because have an incredible number of shoppers and great trust and conversion rates, but you won't make profit. And that's always the hint. You struggle for the sales and the profits just never really come, not properly. So coming back then to what I'm saying, vision and action. The second, so the first level of people is, uh, is um, vision without action is the daydream, right? The second level of people, to put it simply, is the people who, who are doing stuff. They've had the the chutzpah, the cojones. I'm trying to avoid the rude words on my podcast. You know, the, the courage to be part of the small percentage, probably the 80, 20, the 80, 20, the 80, 20. So 1% of people who think they're going to sell on Amazon. They actually do. But then they're stuck in the nightmare of they've ordered a product. They, they did their market research. They ordered a product. They tried their best to do quality. They did their branding work in the sense that the superficial aspects of brand, the visible aspects, I mean, they have a logo that looks nice. They have good packaging. Um, you know, maybe they have a nice strap line or whatever on the packaging, you know, um, whatever it may be. And they're struggling. And I think the reason they're struggling is because they've taken a lot of action, which is great. And they'll learn from that. But what they need to learn from that is, okay, now I've tried selling a a Me Too product. That's painful. Let's not do that again. They've learned a lot of the mechanics of how to do stuff on Amazon and how to order from China and so forth. And mechanics really, really, really matter. Please don't take this as anything other than than, um, practical advice from real life of somebody who's been in the trenches and and works with those in the trenches day in, day out. It's not about being airy-fairy. The mechanics of having a system to really read the marketplace and crunch the numbers are critical. You need to use tools for that. The mechanics of ordering from China, getting proper negotiation systems and principles in place and practicing that proper supply chain management, quality control, that's all critical. Financial measurement, critical. Having a launch strategy and and a very precise set of tactics, whatever works now or in a month or six months, it changes a lot at the moment on Amazon. That's critical. So I'm, this is not a, a vision versus mechanics thing. You've got to have the mechanics down. And the advantage this second set of people have is they understand the mechanics because they've done it. What they need to do, and I'm working with a couple of clients right now to do, is they're doing about $10,000 a month, something like that, £10,000. And they're struggling. The revenue's there, the profit's struggling because they've gone into meeting markets. And we're going to work now on maybe looking at a parallel niche that's, that's not too far away from what they're saying. Maybe it's quite different. And you don't always have to run a mile, but you should start with who you are is my big hint. If you're wondering what to sell, look at who you are and what you buy a lot of, what you're an expert consumer in, at least. If you're an expert producer of it, even better. If you have a supply chain management experience, some people do, or you've made something yourself, fantastic. But if you're an expert consumer in the sense you buy a lot of stuff and you're very passionate and knowledgeable and you're obsessed with the detail, which is really where the the detail is so important when you're getting a good product out and differentiating it but if you are that person great but however you find it you need to take your knowledge of the mechanics which are very great strength which most people never develop because they didn't do anything and and it's just true do anything in the sense of ever selling anything or even buying anything most people don't even buy samples for goodness sake i mean that, that's just silly i mean i don't take anyone seriously who's been in this game for more than two or three months and hasn't bought a sample come on what are you doing go and buy some stuff from china and see if it's rubbish or good at least you can't um, think your way 
to success in this game. But equally, without thinking, it's a nightmare. So again, I come back to that Japanese proverb because I think there's lot, a lot of wisdom in that. It's slick and easy to say, but if you really dig into it, there's loads in it. Vision without actions and daydream. So if you're just not taking action, i.e. you haven't spent any money, you're in daydream mode. Don't kid yourself do something or get out it doesn't matter which but just you're wasting your life i did that for like 15 years of my life about creating an online business between about the age of 25 when i graduated from music colleges and stuff and the age of 40 when i started selling on amazon so don't waste your life like that it's a waste of time if you're not going to do it just don't do it don't fantasize that's a waste of time go and spend time with your wife kids husband wife daughter mum, whatever friends but don't waste your time i mean do something or don't but Coming back to the second set of people, they have products out there, they're struggling. Okay, that is a vision problem. You don't have a vision for exactly who your customer is, what problem they have. You really care about that type of customer because you are that person, probably. Easiest solution, again, like Tim Ferriss says, if you don't know who to sell to, be your own target customer. Scratch your own itch. It's always good advice. It's not always viable in terms of the marketplace. It depends what your itch is. If you really love iPhone cases, then you may have a problem. But okay, if you get deep enough into the, the detail, you may be able to make a success of that. But it's a great starting point. That's what I would say. And then go crunch the numbers. So the third level up. The next level of person is, is the classic 10K Collective and Million Pound Mastermind member, which is that they have had the vision, got excited, got going, sold on Amazon. Some people have been selling for generations in the 10K Collective, selling physical products, but they've only come onto the e-commerce space within the last few years or even a few months. Some people have came from you know completely different backgrounds, but have come into the um, e-commerce space. It has to be said, it helps have some kind of business background that obviously is going to help, right? So if you have got a business background and you're coming across the private labeling and Amazon space now, it is going to help you because you're more likely to pull the trigger and take action and therefore you'll learn right but what's fascinating to me about those guys is the discussions are getting more and more what you might think of as abstract except these guys are making real revenue you know million pounds just before christmas 170,000 pounds just before christmas 80,000 pounds just before christmas real money is being made here so it's not a separation between vision and action these guys are big 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 on both and there's it's kind of obviously the win but what amazes me, what is great to see is like, in theory, you can read the Tony Robbins book, which I read 20 years ago, whatever, when I was making no money and didn't make me rich. But these are people doing it. So it's great to see a, a principle validated in action. In other words, they're developing real strategies. What does strategy mean? It's hard to wrestle to the ground. There's another book I've been reading, reading by Richard Koss called Simple Strategy. I think it is. Richard Koss, um, K-O-C-H, just fabulous thinker about strategy because he's got a great knack of boiling it down to simple brass tacks just i can't recommend him enough i cannot recommend him enough the star principle is the simpler version this book is messier it's written back in the days when he was probably still working as a consultant mid 90s a little bit dated in its examples now but i'm trying to wrestle with it because i think it's too critical to leave uh, just sim just on on one side and just go yeah that's abstract so my take on it is is the interaction between vision and where your marketplaces are or what your tools are. For example, one member of the 10K Collective has been working on creating incredible Instagram marketing for their business. And they haven't they've done some of it, but they realized what they were doing is second rate. So they've gone and spoken to an absolute expert and they're working in conjunction with an absolute expert, which is a hint. Again, not just with your products, but with your marketing practices. You need to be very, very, very good indeed at a particular thing if you want to really kill it. And he's going to be working with somebody who's got an incredible, if you like, taste uh, in exactly how Instagram pages should look. And I'm, I don't know much about this. I'm not a designer. That's one of my weaknesses. I'm working on that with a designer for the amazing FBA site, for example, at the moment, because I recognize now having been, you know, gently hinted into it by my business coach, this is actually critical. I'm a words person, hence why I do a podcast. And I need to recognize design is also critical and I need to bring somebody in. So this guy's smart enough, very knowledgeable already about social media and e-commerce, but he's bringing in, he's collaborating with a, an expert. Somebody else is uh, creating a team sort of portal, which is a, a website designed specifically for, sort of an, uh, I suppose it's an intranet. It's a sort of, it's a wiki. It's a place where his team will meet and he can manage his virtual team. He's growing a team quickly. 
And he's also very into influencer marketing, by the way. But they've been doing some amazing stuff, reaching out to people, sold out a product before Christmas based purely on influencer marketing. Of course, it kicked off the algorithm on Amazon, but there was no Amazon ads, no external traffic that was paid for. I mean, you've got to pay people a certain amount as influencers, there, but it's not paid um, advert traffic. But anyway, so he's developing a system there. And again, these guys start with a vision and then they look at who's out there or what can they develop reasonably quickly. And then they start iterating based on the interaction between their vision, what's practical, what's doable now, rather than waiting for two, five years. Uh, and I think the interaction between those two, between the vision and the mechanics, and between the vision and what's possible, and between the vision and your company and the marketplace, I think that's what strategy is. It's having a clear vision and direction, but vision not in a vague... Somehow the word vision has, has ended up being sort of thing you stick on a um, an Instagram feed ironically or Facebook it's sort of it's some cheesy cliche quote or you buy one of those little books of quotes for, for entrepreneurs it's got pictures of people in the sunset and that's nice it's okay if it makes you feel nice uh, I, I shouldn't be too down on that but that's not business thinking but business thinking is a very very clear vision if I say the word vision means a blueprint if you are um uh, Michelangelo making a sculpture and you see very clearly when you look at a block of marble you see in your mind's eye precisely how the end statue looks like that's not a vague idea it's not a kind of cloud filled blurry vision it's a crystalline crystal clear vision now that's easier because it's just him versus the marble right I don't know about marble carving Whereas business is more fascinating to me because it's more interactive. I guess that's why as a musician that I've always tended towards interactive modes of things. I'm no solo pianist. I was never good enough, but I've done a lot of accompanying. And when you're working with other people or conducting orchestras, um, there are so many moving parts. It's never quite what you think it's going to be. And for me, that's what makes that fascinating, that interactivity. That's why I love the 10K Collective Mastermind and the Million Pound Mastermind. That's why also business is so fascinating because you have your vision. You, you find your team. They have a slightly different vision, sometimes better, sometimes worse. Sometimes they do what you expect. Sometimes they're worse at it. Sometimes they do it better than you can envision. I often have that fortunate experience with my VAs and, and, and people I work with. And then when you put it in the marketplace... Sometimes the customers hate what you thought was going to be great. And sometimes they love some random little feature that you didn't think was important. And that's what makes it fascinating. It really is a fascinating game. I love it. It's intellectually stimulating, but it's, you're, you've got skin in the game. So it's like sport meets chess for me. It's kind of, you know, this is why business is exciting for me. And this is why I think that tension between vision and mechanics, between vision and action is ultimately creative tension and you've got to love that and the final thing i'm going to say to wrap this up is all the people that accept that the odd person who's going to be struggling and the 80 20 rule says that any group of people whether it's you know 100 million or 10 is going to have a couple of people at the bottom end who are really struggling and a couple of people at the top end who are killing it uh, this is the 80 20 rule this is how it works and yeah that can be true in any mastermind as well but most of the 10k collective mastermind members really really up for the game they they enjoy the game they love it they want to get in there it's like a great rugby player or a boxer or whatever it is they they want to get in there and, and kind of be amongst it not necessarily aggressively and nastily but they are they are competitors they want to win but they enjoy the game they accept that they're not always going to win and for them the game is the thing the game is the thing that's a very british sort of victorian quote i believe but also they use the numbers is a measuring card. And for sure, lifestyle is a great bonus and, and drives people to some degree. But it doesn't drive them the whole way. That just is not the whole driver. Because otherwise, they'd be sitting there miserable as sin when things weren't making them cash. And then if they were making cash, they'd just be off in the Bahamas enjoying the cash. And they, they, some of them do. They have nice lifestyles and they drive to, you know, great, in great cars to great places. But that's definitely not the whole driver because it's about enjoying the game. So ultimately, when it comes to it, vision for your business, as in what it does for other people, is critical. That's the missing element for the, the ground level people who never really get started because they don't really have a vision for what they are going to give to the world and who they're going to help and exactly how. They don't have a vision for creativity. But above all, when, when you've set your goals and your vision to, to create a business, to do an exciting thing, actually, when it comes to it, it's the process of business creation and expansion and fighting <laughs> to stay afloat in the bad times and, and growing like crazy in the good times. It's the process, it's the game itself that is really all about. Because you're going to spend most of your life at work 
whether it's working for somebody else or for yourself. And I just think um, you've got to enjoy the process. As somebody said in the 10K Collective, he's doing really, really well. I said, look, you've got to enjoy it. You know, a lot of miserable Amazon sellers out there, which is just true. I'm happy to report that the 10K Collective Million Pound Mastermind, whilst people have their down months in, in individual cases, they're a happy, thriving lot because they're loving the game. So if you want to be part of that, please get in touch. Even if you're not part of it, I'm happy to pass on the learnings from that. The final thing I want to mention is that I'm going to be starting a mastermind for those who are at the early stages, um, but actually taking action. So they've got, say, $5,000 in revenue and they want to get up to the twenty five to $30,000 a month mark where they can go part time or even possibly full time focus on their business. So it's that kind of achieving escape velocity. So I realize there is a need for that. So I will be creating something. Again, if you're interested in that, just email michael at amazingfba.com. Likewise, if you want to join the Million Pound Mastermind, there is not at yet a sales page for that. I will be creating one soon. So the 10k collective i don't know we've probably got one space at the time as, of recording so you can try and apply uh, which is the you know you actually need to be doing twenty five thousand dollars a month upwards i have to think about the names for these things but whether or not you join us um just think about this enjoy the game and if you're not enjoying the game play a different game like i didn't play rugby i was forced to play rugby at school and i haven't played it since because it's not my game i'm not built for it i go jogging and I really love it. And it's a great way for me and my podcasts. It's time to, to, to listen to some exciting business input and get inspired and, and enjoy the feeling of using my body at the same time. So everyone has their game. If Amazon isn't your game, don't play the game. It's fine. Amazon is not for everyone. But whatever it is, find the game that you enjoy playing it. Get a clear vision of who you're going to help. And that takes time to develop. That is in itself work. Develop a vision and then get in there take action enjoy taking action enjoy the game because life's too short to either fantasize it away or to be working miserably you know either to be stuck in the daydream or stuck in the nightmare thanks very much for listening